Hello everybody and welcome to our 30 day growth challenge. This is our video devotional for the day. My name is Christian. I'm the campus pastor here at the Hallmark campus of the Way World Outreach. And today we are diving into James chapter four, verses four through six. Yesterday we heard a great message from James chapter four, verses one through three. And today we're gonna pick right back up where it leaves off. Yesterday we were diving into what it looks like, the, the evil motives of our heart, and we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into what scripture has to say about that. So let's look at James chapter four. Let's go right into it. Verses four through six. Verse four says, you adulterers. That's a harsh way to come out, but that's what the Bible says. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. All right, let's pause here at this verse. First thing, this scripture, this verse says is you adulterers. Obviously, we know what an adulterer is, but let's define that anyways. In this context, the word adulterer is somebody who it's referring to someone who breaks their vow or their love, uh, love for God or their vow to serve God only the vow to love God only. In a marriage context, an adulterer is somebody that breaks their vow to be committed and love their spouse only. So James is calling these people adulterers because they have broken their commitment or their vow to serve only God. In other words, they're having an affair with the world and they've abandoned their commitment to God by trying to be in relationship with both God and the world. That's an adulterous relationship. That's an affair. I've told God, God, my life is yours. I belong to you. I will serve you and I'll live for you only. However, we break that vow of commitment that we've made in our heart to the Lord and we begin to serve or live for the world and we live for the values of the world or what the world has to offer. That's an affair. That's an adulterous relationship between God and the world. And let me tell you, that doesn't work out. Let's keep going. This results, this adulterous relationship will result in hostility towards God. Now, what do I mean by that? This is what it ends up looking like. When you begin to play both sides and you begin to have an affair with the world, living and loving the world and living to please your own flesh, and then trying to live for God on the side, you will eventually build a hostility towards God. You begin to lose passion for the Lord. You will begin to blame God maybe for your lack of growth or your lack of health or your lack of peace or your lack of joy. And eventually it, it turns into hostility towards the Lord. In other words, you begin to see God as the enemy. The Bible says this, you cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve God and the world or God and money and God and other things. So we're going to have to pick one. So when you begin to have that affair between God and the world, you will be torn and you'll, have, you'll, you'll create God as an enemy. You'll begin to become hostile to the Lord. Let's keep going. That next phrase says, don't you realize we're, we're still in verse four. We're going to get through this. So don't worry. Verse four says, don't you realize I think that really James is speaking to a group of people who have become blind and deceived to the fact that they can't be on both sides at the same time. Don't you realize, he's saying, don't you see, don't you realize that you can't do this, that you can't serve God and the world? You can't be a friend of God and a friend of the world. You can't be on both sides. You can't be on two teams. You know, it's, it's, it, you, you can't, you can't play both sides. So, so James is really saying here, don't you realize this is happening? Wake up to this. Then he says, goes on to say, don't you realize that friendship with the world, friendship with the world, what does it mean to be a friend of the world? Well, friendship means an ally or a supporter. I cannot be an ally to the world's causes. I cannot be a supporter 
of the world's ideas, values, beliefs, mindsets, uh, lifestyles. I cannot be an ally, a supporter of what the world is demanding and, 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 and make myself a, a friend of God at the same time. It doesn't work. Whatever the world standards are, they're in contrast. They're contrary to the will of God in your life. So I cannot say I'm an ally of the world and still a friend of God. It doesn't work. So James is saying, don't you realize that this doesn't work? It can't happen. So also too, this is crazy. He says, he's saying, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? That's heavy. Just imagine being an enemy to the most powerful force in the universe. That's not a place that anybody wants to end up. The word enemy means to be actively opposed to. To be actively opposed to. When I become a friend of the world, I make myself God's enemy, an enemy of God. I'm actively opposed to His will, but not only that, He's actively opposed to our will. When, 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 I, when I leave the winning side for the losing side, I don't win. It's as simple as that. But it's time for us today to finally say, I'm leaving the losing side and I'm coming back because of the grace of God. I'm coming back to the winning team. He is inviting you in. Verse four goes on to say, he basically repeats the whole thing again. He says, I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. It's crazy, the re-emphasis of this. He's saying it again. Why? Because we have to hear it again. It's that important. This is not a joke. This is not something to play with. This is not something that should be easily forgotten. We got to hear what God is saying here. This is a time we heed to God's warning and we wake up, we repent because it's not too late. Don't make yourself an enemy of God. It's not God that makes us an enemy in the first place. It's us. We make ourselves an enemy of God. God is saying, don't you realize this is happening? All because we want to be friends with the world and we want to play, we want to straddle the fence and we want to play both sides. It doesn't work. Let's not make ourselves an enemy of God anymore. Let's repent. Let's turn back to Him. All right, let's go to verse 5. It says, do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. So it starts off with this rhetorical question. Do you think the scriptures have no meaning? Do you really think that God doesn't mean what he says? Do you really believe that the Bible is just there to be a a placeholder on your coffee table? Do you think there's no power in what God is trying to say here? God means exactly what he says. The spirit or God's spirit, God has placed his spirit within us. And this spirit continues to long after God. And this spirit continues to to remain faithful to God. We're constantly at war within us. We have a flesh which desires the world and we have a spirit which desires God. And God's spirit that he placed within us the moment we got saved continues to desire God. And God is passionate about this. Some scriptures say that God is jealous for us. God will not just uh, look, look away. He will not, it's not gonna ignore your devotion. He is passionate about you. And he is passionate enough even to give you Jesus. If he's passionate enough to give you his only son, why wouldn't he be passionate about your devotion to him? You mean that much to him and you matter that much to him. The hairs on your head are numbered. He loves you that much. Of course, God is passionate about this. And he's passionate that the spirit he placed within us should be faithful to him and him alone. That spirit within us, it should be faithful to God. What what begins to happen within us is we experience conviction. We experience a, a longing. Anytime we we try to befriend the world, our spirit begins to rise up and tell us, this isn't right. You're better than this. God has created you for more. You're the head and not the tail. You're set free from sin. You've been declared righteous. You have a call on your life. You're greater. When we begin to hear the spirit of God rise up within us and we hear those voices, don't ignore the voice. 
God is passionate about this, that the spirit he's placed within us should be faithful to him. Your spirit will begin to cry out to you to cut the ties from the world. And the, your, the spirit within you will urge you to surrender fully and completely to God. Let's go to the last verse. Verse 6. And he gives grace generously. So good. He gives grace generously, as the scriptures say. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So this is good news for us here. He gives grace generously. God gives us more than enough, more than what we need to stand against any evil desire that comes our way, to resist the lure of the world, the temptations of the world, the pleasures of the world. God gives us the grace we need to overcome all of that and the grace we need to live for Him. It's only, it's only by the grace of God, not by our efforts or our works, but it's only because we rely on the grace of God that we can resist that luring temptation from the world and we can live fully for God. That scripture says, He gives grace generously. We have more than enough grace from God to live this walk out. As the scriptures say, it says, God opposes the proud, but give, gives grace to the humble. When, when God is saying, I oppose the proud, who is the proud? The proud are those that, first of all, are prideful. In other words, somebody that's refusing to admit that they need help. Refusing to say to God, I need you. Refusing to admit, God, I've sinned against you and I confess my sin before you. I need your power. I need your direction. I cannot do this without you, Lord. Again, what happens is we make ourselves an enemy or we put ourselves in opposition to God because of our pride. In other words, we, when we say, God, I don't need you, we become in opposition to God. What does it mean for God to oppose us? Well, God, when it says God opposes the proud, to oppose means to actively resist or work against. God actively resists or God actively works against the proud. God works against those who claim they don't need Him. Every day we go without acknowledging God, without, without welcoming Him into our day, with even I would say this, without even simply praying and saying, God, I need you today. Every day we go, really what we're saying is this, Without prayer, we say, God, I don't need you. I don't need your help. I don't need your intervention. I don't need your favor. I don't need your blessing. I got today. I got today covered, God. I'm good. I don't want to be on that side of the fence. I don't want to be in opposition to God. I want God to be on my side. And when God's on our side is what this verse says next. But God gives grace to the humble. God gives grace to the humble. Humility is the opposite of this. Humility is saying, God, I need you. I can't do it on my own. I need you, Lord. Humility puts us in position to receive the grace of God. Without walking in humility, I can't receive. But when we humble ourselves before God, He will give us the grace we need to resist the devil, resist the lures of the world, resist the world trying to befriend us, and we can fully surrender our lives to Him. This is the passage of Scripture today. We've learned, and in conclusion, this is what we're learning today. That God wants to befriend you. But we can't be friends with the world and friends with God at the same time. Let's learn to be friends of God. Let's learn to honor Him and obey Him and walk in humility by saying, God, I need you. And it's then and only then that we can receive the grace that God has promised us. He's longing for you. He's passionate about you. And He's going to make a way for you. Well, I pray that you were blessed today by today's devotion. Uh, we're going to be diving in uh, tomorrow to James chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. Tune in. We're almost there. We're almost at the end of our 30-day growth challenge. Don't miss it. Let's make it all the way to the end. Let's finish strong. We love you. Let me take a moment to pray for you. God, I pray for everybody that's watching right now, that you would touch them, that you would fill them. God, you would give them the strength they need to resist all temptation, 
And God, you would give them the grace they need to live for you because God, you're passionate about us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us grace generously. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, congrats, you made it through today. We love you so much. We're gonna see you again very, very soon. Tomorrow, let, remember, let's finish this challenge strong. God bless you, have a great day. Thank you.